All right, guys, welcome back. It is time for more Dota 2 pub time action with Captain Canuck here. Um, just found this game on the sixth out of eight pages of uh, games going on right now, so relatively low ELO. Uh, I can't hazard a guess at what it is, but uh, Rebus Gaming versus Angels Team is uh, going to be the game that goes down right here, right now, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we get. We'll see what we get. Just loading in right now. Hopefully things will get underway very soon and my uh, computer can handle this intense load time. Anyway, so uh, while we start to get into this, I'm going to throw out another shameless plug for myself. I've uh, been doing this in my past couple of videos, and I apologize for any concurrent viewers that it may be annoying. But for any new viewers, feel free to check me out on my Twitch.tv ch uh, channel. That is uh, Captain Canuck Dota, same as my YouTube uh Please go check me out. Give me a follow. And every Tuesday and Thursday night, I will be casting games for the uh, Amateur Dota 2 League, the AD2L. So um, it's definitely a good time. So uh, yeah, definitely check it out. I would love to have more viewers, and uh, the I'm sure the league would as well. So all right, so here we go. End of the game. Dark Angels team versus Rebus Gaming. Uh, for Dark Angels, we've got uh, ten uh, seconds remaining. I was gonna, I was gonna five say people's seconds names, remaining. But they're all hard to say. And uh, what is this like, Shakaro? Radiant oh, team Ben. Sometimes, sometimes. Just gotta set my camera acceleration down so you guys can uh, see. Oh, excuse me. I feel a sneeze coming on. I'm gonna mute myself for just a moment here. Ten seconds remaining. Oh man! All right, yeah, that is not pleasant for uh, camera, so I'm glad I got myself muted. For that. Uh, I hope I am not coming down with something. Anyways, getting into this game. Weaver and Silencer, the first two bands, followed by the Magnus. So uh, definitely some Radiant unconventional team bands ben. here. This is uh, this uh, and Low Druid. Yeah, this is the kind of drafting that you Dyer see at lower pub levels. Ben. A lot of people will just kind of know a hero that they don't like they're like silencer gets rid of all my abilities i don't want to deal with that and they just get rid of it right so even though it's not like the strongest pick even though it's not the top of the meta like magnus you know it's kind of just like Radiant get the hell rid of it right it's more of a comfort thing um so i mean even if you end up against a bristleback or something like that it might be more comfortable for you playing against that than it would be for something else and you know it seems silly for a lot of us that are at higher mmrs but uh, that is kind of the thinking that you have to follow when you're down there you have to anticipate what kind of crap people are going to throw at you and uh just deal with it accordingly you got to really adapt. so anyways Visage is the first pickup by dark angels team so that is definitely a uh, meta hero so to speak um very strong if you got a player that knows how to use them and uh, I mean in all rights if you do that is incredible I I mean I was playing Visage earlier today and I'm not the best Visage in the world I, I fed pretty darn hard and my team was getting mad at me etc etc and then I get in another game and I had a Visage player who's incredible man this guy went on a tear he was like 12 and 12 and 0 like ganking every single lane he had a mech and an agonims before i had like my boots like it was just ridiculous this guy was off the edge so uh good visage player can really make a difference jakiro and juggernaut the two pickups for rebus gaming here so uh they are going to be uh that's actually going to be a pretty good combo i like the jakiro uh he's always a fantastic hero he's got so much control with that ice path and then the rest of his abilities just dish out a ton of damage and uh his slow combined up with the ice path will give jakiro more than enough time to spin on any target he wants to or did i just say the jakiro to spin the juggernaut to spin on uh, whoever he wants so that's uh that's definitely a good pickup there the wind ranger is going to be picked for dark angels so they are going to be running that i'm not sure what they're going to be doing with that she can she can run pretty much any role save for mary the, maybe the carry role which she can actually do if you really want to but uh she could be going mid she could be going off lane we'll have to see with their next couple pickups before i can make that call uh, getting into the second banning phase here, we got the Treant Protector banned out. Uh, I think that one is pretty much always justified. Treant Protector is just nasty. Uh, makes all of your lanes really, really hard. The OD is going to be the ban for Rebus, so uh, getting rid of that strong mid laner here could indicate... Uh, actually, no, I can't indicate much. That, uh, that OD ban is pretty standard nowadays. Ten seconds and Ten remaining. seconds left for this uh, last ban out here by Dark Angels. Five Neither team having dipped into their reserve remaining. time quite yet, so they've uh, 
both got a lot of time to make their last three pickups and their, last, uh, their last two bands. So uh, the uh, the reserve time is being used up a little bit here by Dark Angel, and uh, they do get rid of the Vengeful Spirit. Radiant so uh, just kind of trying to keep their positioning intact, I guess. Uh, Vengeful also always just a pretty su strong support. She's got a fantastic aura that uh, works really well with a lot of people. Now, uh, speaking of auras, I've actually seen quite a few. Uh, I actually saw an interesting strategy that I played up again a couple days ago, where a team, actually, yeah, no, it, it was it was playing up against them. Um, the the team focused on uh, getting a lot of auras. So I think they had a Beastmaster off lane, a Shadow Fiend mid lane, a Vengeful Spirit supporting a Luna, and then I think they had a Doom in the jungle. And uh, so between all of that, they had like the they either had the Centaur or the Pack Leader's Aura for, on the Doom, and then they had the Minus Armor Aura on the Shadow Fiend, the Damage Aura on the uh, Venge, the Damage Aura on the Luna, and then the uh, Attack Speed Aura on the Beastmaster. So just all of that combined, when they got into a team fight, the amount of damage that they were dishing out was so ridiculously huge. They were just melting people with single auto attacks. It was crazy. And it worked out so well for them, but... Uh, and, and those are also some pretty strong laners too. I mean, the Luna Venge lane is a little bit weak, but if you if you run it defensively enough, it, it's totally fine. So interesting food for thought for any uh, drafters out there or people who enjoy draft analysis. Uh, Shatter Demon and Bounty Hunter are the first two pickup or the first two pickups of the second phase here. Um, Shatter Demon's going to combo up with that uh, Juggernaut and Jakiro really nicely. Uh, means Jakiro will land every single ice path he throws, and Juggernaut will have a lot of extra time to spin, plus the damage amp will make uh, his spin do that much more damage, so I really like this try lane, and uh, he's looking, it, I'm curious if they're going to try to go aggressive with this, because it's not Five typically, remaining. like, Jakira and Shadow Demon are not typically offensive heroes, Reserve Shadow Demon time. usually has to be paired with somebody with bigger nukes, something like Alina, um, a Lashrak, etc., Jakiro doesn't quite fit the bill, but, um, yeah, we'll see what they choose to do. The Bounty Hunter on Dark Angels means that Windrunner will not be going to the offlane, so uh, she's either going to be looking at being the mid or the support hero. I'm leaning more towards support because I haven't seen her played in mid much lately, but, uh, you know, anything can happen right now. Pudge is the pick for Rebus, so uh, interesting pick up here. I, I kind of like it, I kind of don't. Um, Shadow Demon does not work well with Pudge because whenever he disrupts somebody, the illusions are just going get to get in the way of every single hook he throws. Um, as well, Juggernaut's a hero that kind of wants to just be in the middle of a fight with that uh, spin, just throwing things down, and if he gets hooked out, that's not going to be good. However, there are a lot of... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be hard to lock Ten down the Bounty Hunter and the Wind Ranger. Uh, I mean, the Wind Ranger can get shut down by the Pudge pretty well, but uh, again, this is one of those times where it seems to just kind of be a uh, comfort pick. It's one of those picks that you just grab because Reserve you have a player that's good at it. Not quite because it fits with the team. Not quite because it's a fantastic hero. It's just something that, uh, you know, for your own team's sake will function better. So, uh... Interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that how that plays out. Uh, Dark Angels has still not chosen their mid lane hero, so uh, they can counter that pretty effectively if they do ch choose to go with something like a uh, Quap that can throw at the dagger all the time. Uh, Quap actually works really well against Pudge because you have the stifling dagger, which uh, will obviously bleed Pudge out quite a bit. You have the blink to get away if you get hooked. As well, you can. Gank, you can out gank him pretty much because Pudge likes to spend a lot of remaining. time ganking once he hits six and that uh, you know seven Five to eight minute mark rolls around remaining. kind of be free on the map but uh, if Quap can keep up she can cause just as much havoc as he Reserve can and uh, keep mid game on even footing so um, we'll see if they do decide to go with that Ricky is the ban out for Reba after seeing that Ursa not quite sure about that one I think Ursa is going to be in the uh, uh, in the safe lane with Visage and Windrunner Bounty Hunter will be on the offlane, and we're still waiting on that uh, mid lane hero. Reba's still looking for their offlaner right now, so uh, that's something the Dark Angels will want to ban out remaining. right here. Uh, the Weaver's already banned out. He functions as an amazing uh, offlaner. Lone Druid is remaining. already out of the pool, so they're going to have to look to get a little bit creative. They banned the Bristleback. I, uh, I definitely like that ban. That would have. That is probably what would have been picked there. I, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, that was good. I, I didn't even realize yeah. Perspective was still in the pool. I'm so used to him just being like banned out instantly. Marana, it's a pickup by Reba, so lots of skill shots going down now. Now, that's that's one thing. Juggernaut and Shadow Demon, not so much, but uh, Jakiro, Pudge, and Marana all have pretty long-range skill shots that have to be uh, landed really well to make fights go good. So, I think... Uh, this team's really going to have to execute their strategy really well to make it happen. However, that Shadow Demon uh, will really feed into the Marana really well. And I do like the Shadow Fiend pickup. He works really well against Pudge. And, uh, I mean, with the Shadow Raises, it's really easy to just kind of push Pudge out of that lane. So that's that's the lane we'll have to keep an eye on. Shadow Fiend does have pretty poor base movement speed. So if Pudge can get up onto him and start rotting, uh, Pudge can actually kill a Shadow Fiend as he's, like, retreating from an aggressive push up the lane. So... Like I said, it's uh, it'll be an interesting matchup, but yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Morana versus Bounty Hunter on the off lane. That one's going to be a pretty even matchup. I don't I don't expect that either of those are going to die unless uh, Bounty Hunter gets eaten by or gets hit with like a five second arrow or something. But um, regardless, yeah, I think I think both teams are going to try to go for a uh, safe lane. So we're going to see a pretty passive early game until that uh, punch and Morana start moving around the map. Now up. Uh, uh, Marana and Shadow Demon work really well together as well because that uh, disruption just sets her up for a five second arrow if you time it well. Uh, I forgot to turn off my stuff. Let's go back to default announcer, default HUD, and get my overlay up. Prepare Bam! For battle. Time to rock and roll. All right, so Shadow Fiend already heading up towards that mid lane. Two slippers of agility, three iron branches, and a set of tangos is going to be his starting build. The uh, Windrunner picking up wards, giving them over to Visage so that he can uh, begin warding, getting pulled to Tango on that Bounty Hunter as he goes off to the offlane. GLHF comes out by the Pudge, what a good guy, please commend. And uh, Ursa's heading up towards the top lane with a Stout Shield, a Ring of Protection, a uh, Iron Branch, and Tangos. Now, uh, Marana is heading up towards the top lane here. She's picked herself up a Magic Bond, a Clarity Tango, Bracers of or Slippers of Agility, and a Iron Branch. In the mid lane, Pudge is sitting on the uh, two gauntlets of strength, one iron branch, and then a clarity and a potion. 30 seconds down bottom lane, we've got uh, Jakiro not having any items himself. I think he's given the wards off to the uh, Shadow Demon. And uh, Shadow Demon is sitting on two wards, or two wards, two branches, tangos, and potion. And then two slippers of agility and consumables on the Juggernaut. So he looks like he's going to be going towards that poor man's shield to begin with. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, let's get this game underway. Now, uh, the Shadow Fiend is, uh, is an interesting hero to look at his starting items on. And that was mainly why I was reading it off, and then it kind of just kept going with every other hero. But uh, the Shadow Fiend I wanted to look at in particular because Shadow Fiend has a really, really poor base damage. He's got, um, he has 47 now after having 9 agility. So, uh, what's he get for, yeah, he gets damage per yeah so he starts off with 38 base damage it's absolutely abysmal and the reason he starts off that low is because of necromastery so you get two damage per soul that you have and so for each last hit that he gets up to a maximum um based on his stacks of necromastery he uh gets more damage so he will eventually pick up in lane but it can be really really hard to get your ma necromastery stat uh, uh stacked up early if you don't get your early couple last hits. If you're up against a really good lane dominator, like an OD or even an Invoker or something like that, it can be really, really hard to get those stacks up because your base damage is so abysmally small. But, um, so you'll see a lot of Shadow Fiends start off with uh, really high stat items. Like, even Rayfan Tangos is a uh, pretty usual build on a Shadow Fiend. However, he's chosen to go for the two agility slippers and uh, branches, which has given him at least, or which gave him, I think, 47 base damage to begin with, which was barely enough to uh, get him some souls under his belt. So now he's doing just fine, and uh, I think the rest of this lane will be will be relatively easy for him, uh, providing he doesn't uh, get shot in the face with an arrow or with a hook, rather. Ooh, very nice double pull here. I actually have no clue how to time that. And uh, it's it's really rare to see a support that does, but uh, if you can land that double pull, it is so good. You can actually eliminate an entire wave instead of having half of it walk back and double stack in your lane. And uh, I actually wish I could share that insight with you on how um, how to do that, because like I like I've said, I've tried that a number of times, and every single time I try it, the creeps get over here, and then there's like one of these small camps left, and I, I just mess it up. 
just doesn't work. So, uh, get on that Windrunner. Way to kill the lane, good job. Oh, going on that uh, Marana there, and she actually leaps out of the uh, Shackle Shot. That was really, really close. She would have died there if that Shackle Shot had latched. Power Shot flying out, but it is going to miss her, and uh, she should be off to safety. Now, this Marana is going to have to be really careful in this lane because, uh, I mean, they don't have a lot of lockdown, but if they catch her without leap, or if the leap doesn't take her as far as she needs to be, then uh, she can be in a lot of trouble here. Denied. Down the bottom lane, Bounty Hunter's just doing just fine. They have not purchased sentries for him just yet, so he can walk up right in the middle of the lane and do whatever the hell he pleases. Um, when you see something like this, it is always worth it to get a second point in Shadow Walk early and just forego going for the sh Shuriken Toss, because uh, just having, like, I think, rank 1 to 2 stealth duration. Oh, it actually only goes up by 5 seconds? Okay, I thought it was a lot, uh, I thought it was a lot less. Or I thought it was a lot more than that. Uh, okay. Alright, it's it's still really good to get those extra points in Shadow Walk because it just allows you to stay in the lane so much easier. In the mid lane here, Shadow Fiend uh, now sitting on his bottle in 14, uh, 15 now, ne Necromaster stack. So uh, he is sitting on a lot of damage to last hit with almost 84 to the Pudge's 71. So uh, he is doing just fine. And we'll expect to see him farming up really well in this lane. Pudge is going to have to gank to make something happen for himself. And he's going to find himself a rune here. The uh, Marana is nice. not going to wait for him. Um, instead, she grabs it for herself. And we'll see if she tries to gank with it. I'm not sure what she's going to do. She really doesn't have any health. So I think the optimal the optimal choice there would have been to go for the mid. She throws out an arrow. And oh my god, it latches at full length. This Shadow Fiend is dead. Bye bye, buddy. He gets hooked. And Jeez, that was such a long-ranged arrow. Come on, got James on Dang, the you gotta watch out for that. And even at a ward two, he should have known that was coming. In all rights, he had full vision of that arrow as it traveled all the way up here, and uh, just I don't, I don't know, man. He was just kind of just chilling there. That was really unfortunate for Shadowfiend. And uh, anyway, he's gonna respawn, head back towards lane. First blood goes to the radiant side at four minutes and twenty-ish seconds. The bottom lane juggernaut now has his poor man shield still sitting on a lot of consumables and uh, almost an unnecessary amount. This uh, bounty hunter can't quite really do anything. Bounty hunter's just sitting in the trees here trying to sap up any XP that he can and uh, he's doing just fine for himself right now. Like I said, this laning phase was going to be pretty darn passive just considering uh, how the lanes were going to play out. So uh, I'm actually surprised we saw that first blood as early as we did. Ugh. Well, once again, that uh, early arrow kind of just messed things up for Shadowfiend. He's doing just fine in the lane. Anyways, take a peek at our uh, last hits and denies here. We've got 23 or 24 and 1 on the Ursa, 19 for 9 on the Shadowfiend, 19 and 0 on the Juggernauts, uh, 9 on the Bounty Hunter, and 7 3 on the Pudge. So uh, we're definitely seeing a shift towards uh, the Dark Angels team. Uh, <laughs> Dark Angels team, as, in terms of the uh, CS and the Gold. But uh, the first blood did go to RG, so anything is uh, anything can happen in this game right now. We're just gonna have to wait and see when the intensity starts to pick up, when this Pudge starts to roam, and uh, Ursa perhaps tries to get to himself a Roshan. Now, Ursa did go for the uh, phase boots before his Vladimir's, so a lot of uh, a lot of Ursas will just go brown boots into Vlad's. Oh man, Pudge. Uh, <laughs> Looks like Shadowfiend and Pudge had a little run in there, and uh, Shadowfiend got the best of it, so redeeming himself for his first blood, now uh, putting his first kill on the board for his team. <laughs> yeah, Pudge says fuck, and it sounds like something didn't go quite quite that, quite that, as he planned. The Shadowfiend, uh, as we saw, had very low life when uh, that fight happened, so looks like just a slight miscalculation on the Pudge's part, so I don't blame him. I mean, I do that a lot as Pudge. It's hard to estimate how much damage you can output and how much you can take, especially when you're killing yourself to do damage, so. Yeah, the, uh, as I was saying, the Ursa decided to go for the phase boots before the Vlad. A lot of uh, Ursas will instead go for brown boots into Vladimir so that they can get a really quick Roshan, but uh, that doesn't seem to be what he's trying to do here, and uh, he's still a good chunk of gold off of his Vlad. I think, uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at about 1,500 gold left 
in items to acquire, and he's got 400 right now, so about 1100 gold till he can start uh, doing that Roshan, and that'll be at about the 10 minute mark, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Oh man, Arrow flies out. Oh, Marana's going full, oh, all the way. Pudge gets a hook on the Visage. Visage is going to turn around. I don't even know who's going on what here. The Pudge, oh man, he gets power shotted over the cliff by the Windrunner, and that is enough to uh, drop him down to where Shadow Fiend can kill him. What a fight. That was kind of all over the place. I couldn't, everyone was on the opposite side of their own river, and kind of, I just couldn't tell who was who at the, who at that time, but uh, yeah, Murano went a little bit too aggressive on that Windrunner. I was surprised she got out alive. Pudge uh, decided to go on the Shadow Fiend and just manages to get picked off by that last tick of damage from that power shot. I can't believe that. I, I definitely thought he would have at least had to kill on the Shadow Fiend, but just just not barely. And that's some, uh, an, another tip for a lot of you newer players out there. It's always a great idea to uh, uh, it's always a great idea to make sure that you can contribute to something as you're retreating. As we saw in that fight, Windrunner was really low HP. She was running away, and uh, but she had this frame of mind to peek back at the fight and see what she could do. And from this cliff up here, she was sitting over here, threw a power shot down, and that secured a kill and saved one of her teammates. Now, uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of circumstances where a person will just, you know, click back at base and start buying their items and. You know, they won't really pay attention, and they'll see their Shadow Fiend die, and they'll be like, oh, oh well, right? So, I mean, uh, great state of mind here. I'm liking this Windrunner play. She's doing exceptionally well with that uh, double stacking, that power shot there, and uh, just been supporting really well. Bounty Hunter now sitting on this Pudge, and they're looking to go on him. If they land a good Shackle shot, he is toast. Throws out a hook, not going to get caught out there, and uh, he just walks right up and dismembers the Shadow Fiend. The Shadow Fiend actually does die to the, uh, to the rod, so... That was unfortunate, but uh, Disruption going out on the Ursa, he's still going to continue chasing. Bounty Hunter's uh, catching up, and there goes the last hit for the Ursa. So, now sitting on his Vladimir, he's 10 gold away from it, and he'll have that flown out to him in a moment. He's free to do Roshan whenever he wants. Um, might need some way to get into the pit, like a uh, Smoke of Deceit or some other means, but uh, it looks like he's not heading down there quite yet. So, like I said, it's something we'll keep an eye on, but... Uh, Something we can definitely expect to see him do. Yeah, the Windrunner making her way up to this... Oh, what's she doing? She's trying to line up a power shot? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Hmm. Alright, so she just kind of danced around at the side shop for... Or at the secret shop for no real reason. Oh... Uh, they do have an aggressive lane ward up here so they can see Marana. So I think they're just trying to get like a little bit of damage so that she can uh, power shot. But, but I don't think it's going to be enough. 120 damage and uh, Marana is sitting on what? Yeah, 300 health now. Not going to happen. So that uh, Windrunner is going to retreat back to mid. And there are now five heroes dancing around the mid lane for the dire side. So we'll have to see what they're planning to do here. It looks like they want to get... Uh, uh, Ursa into Roche. There is a Smoke of Deceit on the Visage, and they're walking up pretty far, though. It might be spotted if they do. Okay, so the Smoke does go off, and they are going to Roche. Bounty Hunter takes off into the enemy jungle, just because why not? Might find himself a kill here on this Shadow Demon. Uh, there it is. Shadow Demon sees the Visage, disrupts the Visage. Probably should have disrupted himself. I don't think it really would have mattered. He was toast no matter what. But, uh, yeah, Ursa's working on the Roche right now. This could be bad for, uh, for, uh, Rebus Gaming. Shadow Fiend now, our top last hits on the board, 42 and 21. Those are a lot of denies. Half the denies of your last hits is a damn good score to have. And, uh, that has resulted in Pudge sitting at only 14 last hits and, uh, not really contributing much to this game himself. He's, uh, gotten himself two kills, but those were kind of at the cost of his own life so uh, anyways the uh, the full team for Dark Angels down on the bottom lane Windrunner gonna uh, teleport up to top to try to push that back but uh, for now there's pressure coming out on the mid lane four on four right here and uh, then the other yes. two members of the team are down on the bottom lane actually really good arrow by that Marana there and she picks up the kill on the Windrunner Pudge throws out a hook misses that Ursa so uh, things just not going well for him thanks mate I mean mate <laughs> and uh, see what they choose to do here. They definitely have the opportunity to pressure. However, Ursa is going to return up to the top lane, and uh, they're just going to back off the bottom. 
Looked like they wanted to fight it, but I guess not. Ron almost getting herself caught out there by a rage. She's actually going to pop her ultimate for this. Uh, not sure if it was entirely warranted, but uh, Shadowfiend just throwing out raises, seeing if he can catch her out. Dusk gets popped off, but uh, she's retreated back to her tower, and she's going to be completely fine right now. Bottom lane entirely abandoned. With these four heroes, I actually would have liked to see them uh, just push forward and hit the bottom tower, because there were no TPs available to come back as every hero teleported out from that lane. So uh, I think they definitely would have been able to get it if they just shoved it hard, but regardless, uh, we see them actually kind of returning now. Pudge is just sitting here looking for a hook, and we'll see if he grabs it. Definitely got a window of opportunity here, but uh, there he goes. He gets the bounty hunter. He gets his dismemberment off. Oh, wow, that was so close. That Windrunner made a great shackle shot, but uh, the rot radius was just barely enough to finish off that bounty hunter as he was running away. That was just so many milliseconds of difference. And uh, Ursa eats an arrow there, but he's with his team. He's going to be fine. And uh, Marana's just trying to hold off this top lane. Now gets a bottle delivered to her, so she's got uh, under attack. she's got her good regen, so she can keep throwing out those arrows on cooldown. Ursa now beating the crap out of this tower, but uh, he gets himself disrupted, and the arrow goes a little too premature. And uh, if they had if they had managed to get that combo properly, that Ursa would have been toast for sure. There was no way he would have gotten out of that. I think actually. If Chikiro had followed up on the nice path, they probably would have gotten him too, but uh, he was just not in the right frame of mind to uh, get that done. So now we've got uh, four heroes pushing on four heroes here in the top lane, and then uh, the last remaining two down on bottom. Oh man, Shadow Demon getting blown up so quickly. He drops, but the Chikiro dish got a lot of damage. Visage almost dead, but not quite. Remember, he goes out on the bounty hunter. He drops. Shadow Fiend drops, or the Ursa drops, sorry, and uh, his Aegis is going to get popped. He's going to see if he can uh, chase after that Pudge. Not sure if that's a smart idea. He he doesn't think so either. Turns around, he's going to chase onto that Piranha, but she gets creep, creep blocked and dies to the Ursa, who is now going to pick up the kill on that tower there. So uh, that Aegis is really paying for itself, Radiant's making that fight happen in the favor of Dark Angels Gaming. And, uh, oh man, down on the bottom lane. Juggernaut picks off the Windrunner. Looks like he just threw out his ultimate for that, and uh, that was the end of that. So 8 uh, to 8 is the kill score, 14, min 14 and a half minutes into this game. And uh, definitely looking like it's going to be a good game here. I uh, was expecting a little bit of silliness considering the uh, presumably low bracket that we were in. But, uh, you know, it's, it's working out okay. Both teams are playing pretty damn well. And, uh, you know, some mistakes being made, but I think it's good at... Like, Good as it is. Bounty Hunter now seeing that there is an Observer Ward right there. He's going to have to retreat back. Track goes out on this Juggernaut. And they're going to chase up to him, but the Pudge is right there. And oh my god, Bounty Hunter gets exploded in a matter of seconds. Bye-bye, buddy. He's just gone. They're not going to continue on to Shadow Fiend, but uh, getting the Bounty Hunter, that is always a plus. Dragonaut's actually been farming up pretty damn well himself now, almost catching up to that uh, Shadow Bean, 52-0. and 0. Oh man, Vintage gets hooked from the low ground up to the top. Pudge grabs himself a kill. Shackle Shot goes out, but uh, it's not really going to matter. Pudge has got a lot of health as it is. Seven Slash Heap stacks up now. That uh, gives him six bonus magic resistance, or six percent bonus magic resistance, and uh, seven additional strength. Next path flies out, going to catch a Windrunner, and uh, birds being as OP as they are, just fly right over the ice Dyer's path. Middle why not? Is under attack. <coughs> uh, Ursa running into that mid lane there. Not going to be able to catch that Marana as soon as he goes on, or she'll just leap, so uh, not bothering. Track goes out on the Marana anyways, and uh, they're just going to farm up these creeps. The bottom Radiant lane punch still looking for hooks, and uh, we'll attack. see if he decides to go for that uh, Windrunner. He doesn't quite see her, but he is going to go around on the Shadow Fiend, and Oh man, I don't know if there's any way he's going to get out of this. Just Shadow Fiend is toast. Oh, unless he... Pudge whips the hook completely and he has a Blink Dagger. I did not notice that the Shadow Fiend went for the Blink Dagger. So, uh, this is a pretty old school build. I, I, this is something that, like, Dendi and a lot of Dota 1 pros used to do on the uh, Shadow Fiend because positioning was so important with him. But, uh, I don't see it done very much anymore. A lot of Shadow Fiends tend to just go for, uh, straight up damage, perhaps a, uh, Yasha or a Desolator right off the bat. Just something to get their, uh, just something to get their damage cranked right up, but, uh, you know, that doesn't end up being the case. We got the Marana ulti flying out, then they shoot the arrow, but it completely misses. Man, you gotta land those combos. You gotta start with the Shadow Demons and go into the Marana arrow. They're gonna get the kill anyways, but, uh, a little bit of sloppy play there. 
Lots of damage going out by the Shadow Fiend here. Let's out a fully charged ultimate. And he's trying to do what he can, but uh, there's just not enough heroes here to make this fight happen in the way of Dark Angels. They are definitely going to fall here. Arrow catches this as he tries to retreat out. And uh, I think Bounty Hunter is toast too. Yeah, five for nothing white. Look how low all of these heroes are. That was just some really good aggro juggling for uh, uh, Re Rebus Gaming here. And uh, damn, that was definitely well played. 15 to 8 is your kill score after that team fight. Five kills going in the way of Rebus, and I think now would be a fantastic time to check out the EXP and Gold Graphs. If we look at the EXP, it was starting to slip in the way of uh, Dark Angel's favor, but uh, after that team fight, it has just spiked back up massively. 5k in the way of uh, Rebus. Now, if you look at that Gold Graph, it is still in the way of Dark Angel's gaming, and uh, oh man, flink in on that uh, Marana. Nothing's gonna happen there, so we can continue looking at this. But yeah, as you see here, it just kind of dip, 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 and Dark Angels was getting the better engagements, and they were getting track gold, which meant that they were getting a lot more. But after that team fight, it spikes back up to about 1,000 difference. So uh, gold, gold is still in the way of Dark Angels, and uh, Reba's having the experience advantage after that five-man team fight. Track goes out on the pudge. They're not gonna be able to do much on him though. He's uh, gonna be able to walk himself away from that. See if he can land a hook here, he's definitely looking for it. Throws it out, does manage to nab the Visage at the max range. Gonna get the Determinant out off, and uh, Visage drops. Uh, Jakiro drops in return though. Keep turning around and picking that up. Arrow flies out, gonna catch that Shadow Demon, and uh, he is definitely toast. Bye bye buddy. Shadow Feet goes down, and uh, that was a two for one exchange. Dark Angel not getting what they wanted there. And uh, that was just such a good hook by the Pudge. Pudgy, Pudgy, Pudge. Looks like Marana might be heading towards a Black King Bar really early on here. What's she got on the courier? Sanj, okay, so Sanj and Yasha. I, I don't know if she could be going for a Halibur. Actually, might be going for a Halibur. It, it would be really useful against the uh, Ursa, because he's just nothing without his auto attacks, but uh, I'm curious, I'm curious. I think Sanj and Yasha is the standard pick, well, the more standard pickup for Marana, but uh, it definitely would make sense to go for the uh, Halibur, so. Is Pudge looking for another hook, hiding up on that high ground there. He doesn't have enough mana for uh, Dismemberment after the hook, so his team's going to have to uh, dish out the damage if he does manage to get it. But, uh, I mean, at this stage in the game where they are positioned, a hook means a death right now. There are no four staffs up on uh, Dark Angels quite yet. Um, Wind Ranger has not been able to pick those up. She's pretty darn poor. Visage not going for one, and uh, oh man, Bird getting lost to the Marana there. Not a good deal. You gotta make sure you're careful with those birds. Arrow flies out. Oh man, did it? Did it really just hit the bird and the bird didn't take anything? Damn it! I hate familiars, man. They're so OP. So OP. I mean, you can't even argue with me about that. That's just ridiculous. You got units that are invincible to every single spell but are still but will still take the effect. They can secret service so much crap from freaking Bane's Nightmare to uh freaking Marana Arrow. Radiant's top familiar. tower is so under much. attack. You should know the damage now on that Marana. She throws out another arrow and gets it screwed by the familiars, but uh, Viz is looking like he's going to drop there. It looks like he was having a hard time microing and uh, got his hero caught out. Remember goes out on the, yeah, on the uh, bounty hunter, and he drops right away. Two heroes down on the side of Dark Angels, and uh, a lot of uh, damage coming out on the Shadow Fiend. We'll see if he gets caught. Marana leaping in and throwing out the uh, Starfall. See if she can land the arrow of her life here. Secret Service, Wind Ranger, jumps in front of that, takes it, and the Pudge is going to hook her for the kill, so uh, they lose another there. Not getting the Shadow Fiend, but getting the Wind Runner instead. But uh, I think if Wind Runner didn't take that arrow, Shadow Fiend would have, so I guess it's fair. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Ursa now sitting on a Skull Basher, looking to uh, get them bashes Dyer's out quick, but tower powers dropping left and right for Dark Angels, Dyer's and they have slipped down a slippery attack. slope. Uh, starting to give the team away, to be honest. Arrow flies out, does manage to catch Shadow Fiend right as he TPs in. That's like a five second arrow. He is going to be dead here. Yeah, he definitely falls. There goes, uh, there goes the Shadow Fiend, 
and uh, Viv is just not being able to stand up to it. Tehran is getting out of control. 6 1 and 7 and just landing the arrows that she needs to. And uh, definitely claimed as well. Throws out an arrow on the Wind Ranger, gets another kill. Oh my god, arrows left and right getting the kills for uh, Re Rebus Gaming. And Swimmerman goes out on the Zersa and he's going to be toast. Bye bye, Ursa. Nice knowing you, buddy. There he goes. Just, uh, one hero fall after another. Everybody trying to go in on their own, and it is not working for him. Look at this spike here. Just going straight up. 10,000 XP in the way of uh, Rebus. And this gold graph is now going to be back in their favor. 3k advantage to them. And, uh, geez, these engagements have just been taken so sloppy. So sloppily. Slop, 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 slop. Uh, so poorly by Dark Angels Gaming. Every single time they've tried to engage, they've just been going in with too, many, too few heroes, too few abilities. And uh, they're just not focusing on the right things, and it's really costly. It really is. It is the Halberd. So uh, the Heaven's Halberd is the pickup for uh, for the Marana instead of going for that Sanji I, uh, <laughs> I I definitely, like I said, it it, de it definitely is understandable in this situation. You get the evasion against the Ursa Bounty Hunter, which uh, makes a big difference, and then you've got the uh, disarm for Shadow Fiend and Ursa, which is going to be huge. Viz is trying to get himself killed by Rot there. He's uh, flirting with death there, but he manages to make it out alive. Demarana throws one auto attack, it's going to catch up with him, and the uh, Omni Flash just blows up the entire team. Marana now 11, 1, and 8. This game's going to be called pretty soon. Four heroes down, 28 to 10 the kill score at 23 minutes, and these racks are gone. I think Dyer's this is actually going to be GG. This is just absurd how quickly Rebus took off with this game. Like I was saying, it was actually pretty even. We were seeing gold advantage for DA, XP advantage for uh, Rebus, and uh, both teams sitting on 14 kills apiece at, uh, I can't remember the timing, but uh, they were pretty even. And now just, it's Dyer's just taken off. Actually, wait, attack. did I say 14 kills? No, that, it was 8 kills that they were tied at. That, I, oh, it was 14 minutes. It was 14 minutes, 8 kills apiece. Messing my stuff up a little bit, but uh, now, almost 10 Dyer's minutes later, we've seen uh, RG taking 20 kill advantage, while uh, Dark Angels have only gotten themselves 2. Not what they need here, and uh, they are still going to fight it out. Jackal Shot flies out, the Ursa tries to move forward, but gets disrupted. Shadow Fiend taking a lot of damage with that medallion up, he drops really quickly. Guts goes out, and this uh, hero is being spotted out, and is he going to drop? He's really low, pops off the mech, not quite dying just yet. Person trying to catch up with him, Bounty Hunter following as well. Medallion goes out, trying to lower him out, but uh, Pudge gets a hook, and he gets a nice ice path, ice path meaning that uh, the cheer hero is going to live. Winterhunter drops in the middle of that fight. The entire team of Dark Angels trying to chase down the Marana, but it's just not going to happen. They are going to run right into that punch and uh, getting out. Oh man, who died there? Juggernaut died, but the Ursa is going to die in return. 2-3 to three, the kill score in this fight right now. And uh, Bounty Hunter getting himself caught by a Starfall. On top of that Sentry Ward, another Visage Bird dying and uh, more momentum in the way of Rebus. They are going to have, they're going to be able to walk right up and get that melee rack that they missed out last time. Arrow flying forward, not going to catch anything. But uh, yeah, this rack's still up, regenerating slowly. But I think they, actually they're not going to go for it. So that rack is going to regenerate. The only racks being gotten in that fight is the ranged one, which uh, does not make a huge difference. Just gives you these fat, uh, fat little bastards here, which only have about 200 HP more and uh, than the normal creeps. They also have a single armor, but uh, not a big deal to be dealing with range creeps. Now, Dark Angels, what do they do in this... Wow, two mechs? Two mechs. Alright, next level strats. Alright, so Dark Angels game, what do they do in this scenario? This is, uh, this is something that uh, doesn't get talked about often enough. It's, you know, a, a, a team is down, they're taking a beating, they're, uh, you know, 20 kills down and uh, you know how do you really pull this back well first of all you've got two really strong cores in the Ursa and the Shadow Fiend you've also got the availability to take Roshan pretty much whenever you want because Dyer's of Ursa top tower is under so attack. I think in this scenario oh man that hook 
I think in this scenario, what you really have to do to make this, uh, make this game happen. Actually, I'll get back to this in just a moment. Looks like a fight is going to happen here. Uh, Bounty Hunter deciding in to initiate on the Pudge because that's always a better idea than uh, initiating on a Marana. And uh, Shadow Fiend ulties a bunch of creeps because uh, farming is good. And uh, he's actually he's probably going to get himself caught out here. Pudge does not have a line for that hook quite yet. And uh, is getting beaten down on by that Ursa. But he gets disrupted uh, from Windrunner. Trying to survive that fight does not manage to. And uh, Ursa gets blown off almost instantly. Bounty Hunter is still trying to pick off that uh, Pudge. But it's just not going to happen. He gets juggled around and he gets finished off. So, anyways, uh, like I said, I do believe that this game is GG. Anything can happen. And we've seen turnarounds before. But uh, I think this is just too far gone. Regardless, the best course of action for them to make this game at least middle somewhat winnable, under attack. they need to drop these wards in and around their jungle. Make sure that they are completely safe whenever going into these camps, because Dyer's for the rest of this game, Rebus is, is going to be dancing in and around this area. They're really going to want to shut down Dark Angel's farm and keep them inside of their base. So you need to make sure that you've got wards up here, that it's sentry so that you can get rid of uh, opposing attack. wards. Um, and then in the entrance to the jungle, you need a ward right here and a ward over here or up on this cliff. You need to make sure that your jungle's safe. Top With the Ursa, you need to smoke him up, get Roshan, because that Aegis will help out your fight so much, and the gold for your team is just going to mean more items that uh, they haven't managed to pick off before. Oh. You need to avoid crap like that. <laughs> a ward right here would have told you that Pudge was waiting for a hook, and uh, you would have avoided that death. And uh, you really just need to avoid that. And then you just need to stay as a team. You need to play smart and not get picked off. Like I said, there's a lot of skill shots that make Rebus Gaming's lineup strong. They have the Pudge Hook, they have the Mirana Arrow, and they have those Ice Paths. And each time those connects, Rebus gets a free kill. And uh, it just wouldn't be that way if uh, Dark Angels were avoiding those properly and uh, just, playing, uh, just playing smart about their position. So I think those are the keys to victory there. You need to get your wards up, you need to steal Roche, and you need to be smart about getting into those skill shots. And uh, we've seen none of those things happening from Dark Angels, and that is why they're dying. So uh, Rebus Gaming going to take themselves an easy Roche. It has been spotted us or assumed by Dark Angels. They don't have any wards to spot it, but I think they know what's happening, and they're going to try to see what they can do about it. Bounty Hunter walking in here, there's no sentries or true sight available, so Bounty Hunter wanted to go in there. He could have stolen an Aegis, but he does not, and they're going to engage this. Five on five with an Aegis on the enemy team. The Jakira actually blows up really quick, which means no ice pass. And uh, that sh the Shadow Demon is going to drop really quickly. Fudge throwing out of dismember, getting that Ursa kill, which is going to be a huge portion of uh, Dark Angel's damage. But uh, that Morana now dying. Oh, and the Juggernaut comes in with a cleanup on the Slash. And uh, that is going to be a five man wipe for the two supports of Rebus. So GG is called. I don't blame them one bit. This game got so far out of control so quickly. And uh, I think that's going to be it. We'll see if they actually pull the surrender. There it goes. The Ancient does explode, and uh, GG, GG it was. Like I said, I think that there was a point, like, actually, I'll see if I can still pull this up. Yeah, we can pull it up. So, like I said, this dip, it actually looked a lot bigger earlier because of the relativity of the scale, but uh, at about this point where it was about you know 14 minutes both teams are actually pretty even and uh, Dark Angels actually had an advantage for a while in the XP now in the gold they were actually ahead for even longer than that they had a couple good team fights going their way and they were farming a lot better but then they just got into these five-man fights and just kept eating hook after arrow after hook after arrow after ice path after everything and it just climbed and climbed and climbed in the way of Rebus and they just took the game away in that mid game so uh, unfortunate turn of events there I think they could have played that a little better to uh, make sure that they make sure that 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 kind of stuff didn't happen but uh, regardless there is your end screen the radiant side Rebus gaming going to take that uh, victory and uh, that will be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I've really appreciated you tuning into this broadcast. And uh, as always, check me out. Well, check me out on my Twitch channel, Captain Canuck Dota. I'll be streaming every Tuesday and Thursday, the Amateur Dota 2 League. We've got a lot of great teams and a lot of great games coming up. So uh, I would love for you guys to tune in, especially this Tuesday. I'm going to be casting the highlight game of the night, which uh, I can't remember the two teams' names, but uh, it's definitely going to be a good one, as well as another set of games. So there will be four total games played on my stream on Tuesday. Definitely check it out. And uh, like, follow, share, subscribe, whatever you normally do on YouTube. I don't know. And... Uh, just kind of, yeah, show me some love. 
I would love to see that. Anyways, thanks guys so much for watching. I'll let you go. Have a great night, and I will see you guys next time.